Hi everyone, Lena here and today we talk about the empress who brought luxury to Russia's everyday life, had palaces of gold and knew above as well. Today we are talking about Peter the Great's daughter Elizabeth. Now we all remember that she took the throne by force with the help of the National Guardsmen. Please note, not a single person got hurt during the plot. Elizabeth said that God was on her side that night and she had promised to never condemn anyone to death during her reign. And so, during her reign, not a single death sentence was passed. Former Emperor Ivan was exiled to a faraway town up north, where he was held up prisoner together with his parents. Anna Leopoldovna, shortly after giving birth to her children there, had died. And there was Anton Ulrich, who we know about from our previous episodes. He stayed there for over 30 years and had died without getting pardoned. Their children had also lived there for over 40 years. At some point they were finally released and sent to Denmark, where they immediately died one after another. The most terrifying happened to the former Emperor Ivan. He was only four years old when he was taken away from his parents and locked up in a solitary confinement cell just next door to his parents. But neither he nor the parents knew about that. Fourteen years later, the kid was escorted to another fortress where he was locked up in the fortress prison where he died in 1764 under the rule of another monarch who we are going to talk about in our next videos. Previously, we have talked about how popular Elizabeth was and how Shana Dinar Schaff wanted to marry her. By the way, at this very moment there is a temporary exhibition going on at the Hermitage Museum where you can see some of the gifts he brought here when he came to Russia to propose to a beautiful princess. We will definitely make a video about it and you will have the chance to see them for yourselves. Keep following us and make sure you are subscribed to our channel. Peter the Great wanted his daughter Elizabeth to get married to Louis the 15th of France, but it never happened. She had a long-lasting love affair with a shepherd from Ukraine, Alexei Razumovsky. Alexei was a choir boy at a choir hall just behind me here in St. Petersburg, and he lived in Elizabeth's palace. They were together for almost 20 years and were never far apart. He turned out to be a distinguished state official with thousands of souls in his possession. However, we know that he was a kind man with simple demeanor. This love affair is well documented and the two of them never even tried to hide it. They would often be seen walking out of theaters together and passers-by saw her buttoning his fur coat. They would always hold hands and it was a sight to behold. During the fall of 1742, they had secretly married in a church of a small village Petrovo near Moscow. We don't have official proof of this event, but there are lots of rumors supporting that. A lot of people want to know if they had produced any heirs. Historians believe that it is very much possible and the kids born this way would quickly disappear from the palace as they were given away right after they were born. Elizabeth reign went down in history as the golden rule, when Baroque style had dominated over everything else in art. The main architect of that time was Francesco Bertolomeo Rastrelli, a brilliant master and one of the landmark architects of St. Petersburg. He could read the Empress's mind, would never disappoint her and, at the same time, all of his works turned out to be iconic for St. Petersburg. Winter Palace, that we know as the main hermitage building, Catherine's Palace with its golden suites, halls of mirrors, and the world-famous Amber Room are just the two examples that show how big this architect was. The palaces and all the luxury became the trademark of Empress Elizabeth and her court. It was she who would never wear a dress more than once. Putting on dresses, doing all the makeup, Throwing ball parties, hunting, going to see theatrical performances was the daily routine for her. They say she was very self-centered. 
Behind the pretty face was a spoiled lady who would often hurt her family and her whole entourage with just one word that she wouldn't bother to analyze what she was saying. She would never sleep in the same bedroom as well, and her days would often turn into nights and vice versa. Some people believe that her nocturnal lifestyle came from fear of falling victim to a plot at night just as what she did to her political rivals in 1741 when she took over the throne. Her secret police worked overtime and there were reports existing telling us that there was indeed an attempt planned by the opposition to overthrow her in 1742. By the end of 1740s, she had broken up with Razumovsky, but they made their separate ways and still managed to remain friends. She had even made him a field marshal. Her new passion was someone Ivan Schwab. The man was smart, he loved art and patronized different artists. People say he was a modest, honest man, no stranger to be kind. He kept his integrity all of his life and he would always shy away from Empress's luxurious gifts. In 1757, Vice Chancellor Vorontsov, who would make up a lot of edicts for the Empress to sign, handed Shvalov an edict that would promote him, Shvalov, to the senator position, would give him a title and would award him with St. Andrew's Order, which was the high state award at the time, would give him 10,000 souls to possess. All that Ivan Shvalov had to do was to add this piece of paper to the others he would give Empress to sign. That would have made him extremely rich overnight, just as it happened to all the former favorites of Russian Tsars and Tsarinas. However, Shvalov didn't do that and wrote to the Vice Chancellor, I was born a man of integrity, immune to the temptation of falling a slave to the riches of this world. This wasn't a bravado. He valued other things in life. Things like science, art, creative people. He wanted to be a part of that circle. The Enlightenment was becoming a reality at that time, and this all was more attractive to him than the money and fame. As a result, he was one of the people behind the foundation of Russia's first university and the system of state-sponsored schools all over the country. When the Empress took power, there was a war with Sweden going on again, and one of the first things she did was try to negotiate peace with them. Swedish rulers were not interested as they believed Russia was weak enough to give up the Baltic states. However, Russian troops under the command of Field Marshal Lassie were able to defeat the Swedish army and they capitulated in 1742, leaving behind the territory of today's Finland, and after they finally negotiated peace, a big chunk of southern Finland became part of the Russian Empire. After that war, Russia had enjoyed peace for the long 14 years, an eternity for the 18th century. It was only in 1756 that Russia got dragged into the Seven Years' War, which was pretty much the world war at the time. In the summer of 1757, Russian troops had defeated the Prussian army and took over the city of Königsberg, today's Russia. And the citizens of the eastern Prussia had pledged allegiance to the Russian Empress Elizabeth. Her later years were pretty much dark as she was sick all the time. Nightlife, parties, fat food, her reluctance to see a doctor took a toll on her body and her beauty started to fade away and there was nothing she could do about it. It all came as a shock to her. Jewelry and dresses could not hide away her wrinkled face. She was depressed, would cancel her parties all the time and hid away in her palace. Only her favorite Ivan Shovalov could see her. She died on Christmas Day of 1761, and her nephew, Peter III, took the throne. So Peter the Great's daughter ruled for 20 years and was good on Russia. It was the reign of peace and prosperity. Russian economy was booming. Russian bread, timber, lard and iron were very much sought after all over the world. No person was executed during her rule. Russian people had changed for the better. She had built a strong foundation for the development of Russian science, for the growth of Russian art, commerce, national identity started to form. Next, we are going to be talking about a very controversial Russian ruler who made a lot of controversial things during his life and it all came to haunt him in the end. 
He was also married to a girl who later became Catherine the Great of Russia. And we will also talk about another big palace king. Thank you for joining us today. Make sure you subscribe to our channel, drop your likes and tell us what you think here in the comments. Stay safe everybody and see you soon.